I'm Ashley Lambert. I'm a speech pathologist and director of clinical development for Speech5. Today I'm here with Donna and we're going to um, show you what an initial calibration would look like as part of your full evaluation for hypokinetic dysarthria. Donna, thank you so much for being here today. I'm glad to be here, Ashley. So you and I have already started your evaluation. We've completed a cranial nerve exam. We've completed a patient history. And I just wanted to go over briefly with you again. Tell me a little bit about your diagnosis and what you've gone through to this point. All right. Well, I was diagnosed when I was 36, which is back in 1996, which we'll have you guys all calculating. Um, it took three years because it was un kind of unheard of for young people to have Parkinson's disease then. And also unheard of is I started out with Cinemet, which is kind of the silver bullet for Parkinson's, right away. And usually they start with a dopamine agonist, which it helps dopamine stay in your brain, because that's what we're short of in Parkinson's disease. So. It was, my kids were four and six, and so basically they've never known a mom without Parkinson's disease. When did you start noticing changes with your, your voice and your communication? I didn't really notice it myself so much. It was more other people saying, what, what, or turning their head towards me to try and hear. Um, it was probably, 2008. Okay, so about 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, and I know you said you had vocal fold injections mm -hmm. in 2002. Mm -hmm. And how did those go for you? For me, they didn't work at all. I know there are people that they've been done great for, but I had them and I only had them once because it just didn't work with me at all. Mm -hmm. And did you have any other speech therapy? I've been sent to speech therapy twice and one time she felt I was plenty loud enough. I didn't need to go to speech therapy really at that time. And I wasn't, um, I guess, devoted enough to want to do the big and loud program because it takes a lot of dedication to do that every day. What are your goals for your communication now? I would like to have people be able to hear me in a group, that's where it's really the most difficult because one-on-one, -on -one, most people can hear me and understand me. Um, but in a group, you're just kind of lost because all the conversation goes on around you and you can't really break in. And sometimes I'll raise my hand and say, my turn, my turn. But it's the group setting that I'd like to be heard in. Great. Well, then that's what we're going to address for your goal. All right, Donna, so we've completed most of your evaluation, and now we're just going to take some more data about your voice, OK? OK. We're going to use this microphone that we already measured and is 30 centimeters from your body. And then this device, it makes sound. The sound's going to turn off and on, and it will get louder and softer. Do you have any questions about that? No. Great. Do you mind if I put it in your ear? Yeah, that's fine. OK, thank you. All right, so the cord's only on it while we take the data, and then we'll take the cord off. Okay. Does it feel all right? Yes. Perfect. We'll get started. All right, the first thing I need you to do is say ah and hold it like this. Ah, whenever you're ready. Ah. Perfect. Now I just need to get a sample of your speech. Think of a topic that you can talk about for about 60 seconds. OK. Well, we were talking about that you have a cowboy hat in your hutch that was your grandfather's. You put it on the Christmas tree. And talking about how your child will, your daughter will inherit all this someday. And where she's excited about it, my brother and I were like, OK, you get that of mom and dad. So I, no, that's yours. And there's, in particular, there's a pic picture in, from the Bahamas that my mom bought, and she was so tickled with it. She just loved it, and we all thought it was horrible. So 
um, my brother and I now, with our, our parents are gone, we have a game of passing the picture back and forth. <laughs> we hide it in each other's houses. And it's funny, I had it hanging in my laundry room, and I didn't notice it for two weeks. And I probably wouldn't have noticed it then if they hadn't said something. So that's um, kind of my story of inheritance. <laughs> my parents were collectors. They were savers, part of the you know, the World War II mm -hmm. mentality, and they saved everything. So it wasn't all as big a treasure as they thought, but it meant something to them, so it means something to me. Great. All right, I need just a little bit more. Um, we were talking about your grandson. Tell me some more cute things about him. Oh, gosh. I have to... Well, I told you about him playing hide-and-seek. He... Oh, yesterday he did something new, something that hasn't interested him before was the Duplo blocks, the big blocks. And I've never had him do more than put one on the table. And he's building big towers and having me big, build big towers with him. And then he'd knock them down. And being the grandma that I am, I had to tell him that that was OK to do to grandma, but other kids would not like it if he knocked their towers down. <laughs> So, life lessons at grandma's house. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have all the data I need. How does that sound in your ear right now? You know, I didn't even notice it at first because I'm just talking to you and not thinking it's comfortable. It doesn't feel good. It just feels like my ear. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Well, you can barely notice it with your hair. Um, how does your voice feel to you? It doesn't feel different. So what we did was that speech five is tricking your brain. It's turning the sound on. It sounds kind of like, how would you describe the sound? Kind of like white noise. It's kind of like a lot of people talking in the background. Yeah, it's actually 12 conversations that are blended and blurred together. So kind of restaurant sound. Um, and it's only turning on when you start talking, and it turns off as soon as you stop talking. Mm -hmm. And what that's doing is tricking your brain into thinking you're somewhere with increased ambient sound. And we all have a response called the Lombard effect, where we automatically recalibrate our volume to be louder, slower, and articulate more clearly to be heard as our environmental sound increases. Well, let me show you. So you started out at 63 decibels. I didn't have any trouble hearing you in a quiet situation. And I know that's what you told me earlier, that one-on-one -on -one you're doing pretty well, mm -hmm. but your goal is to be able to be heard in a group. And I'm right. assuming a group with more background sound, not a, a silent situation. What we were able to do was get you up to 69 decibels. That's an increase of six decibels or 60% volume increase. Wow. That might be enough to to try in a group situation. I think it probably will help you out. Um, so this could be an option for you. Mm -hmm. And it, it would be really interesting for you to go try it in your normal environment, and especially out with your girlfriends in some group situations and report back. What I'd recommend is that you wear it every day. This acts like a Fitbit. I'll actually be able to see how much you've been talking while you're wearing it. In the research studies, we recommend everybody wear it or speak aloud at least 30 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. So that may mean that you need to read some newspaper articles or have some really newsy conversations with some friends to make sure you maximize your talking time. Okay. The reason we want to do that is because it actually follows the same um, principles as training muscles. Just like putting more load with weights and doing repeated exercises increases the strength of other muscles, that's what we're trying to do with this as well. And we have studies that show that it can help with increasing breath support and how your vocal folds actually vibrate and come together for speech. Yeah, that, that'll be great. I know it'd be nice to have people actually hear me and not just go, uh-huh, or turn their head and lean towards me trying to hear. We'll just unplug the device. You can take it home. There's a charger. So you'll just put it in here every night. Um, it plugs into the wall. 
There's a little indicator light that's yellow when it's charging. It'll be green in the morning and ready to go, and it'll last you all day. How many hours? It lasts about 8 to 12 hours. Okay. So I recommend people wear it all day as much as they can. The only time I don't have people wear it is um, if you're going to exercise class because you're really not going to be talking as much. Mm -hmm. And with the movement, I know that, that it can be a concern. So we'll get back together in a couple weeks and see how you've been doing. Okay. Perfect. Utilizing the Speech Vibe and the calibration tool in your initial evaluation provides an efficient way to gather quantifiable data and another intervention tool to discuss with your patient for their plan of care.